next we're going to have uh, a little video about Star Wars Squadrons. So here we go guys, Star Wars Squadrons, which also had some uh, gameplay reveal at Gamescom. So here's what we're going to do. First, we are going to have a look at uh, the entire trailer, which is lasting for three minutes. And then we're going to break it down scene by scene, piece by piece, because there is a lot to be talking about. So here we go. Let's talk about it right now. We all choose our path, light or dark. Freedom or destruction. The Empire chose to destroy Alderaan in order to spread fear and douse the fires of rebellion. Princess Leia. But the heroic pilots of the Rebel Alliance have chosen to keep fighting it, to show the Empire that we are not afraid. It was their bravery that ended Palpatine's reign and brought about our new Republic. However, the Empire lives on, shattered though it may be. As I speak, Imperial forces are edging toward the Bormia sector, hoping to end our new Republic before we find our footing. As their empire collapses, they try to tighten their grip. But the galaxy is changing, and you can be a part of it. With the help of brave and daring pilots, this war can end. Make a choice. Fly with the new Republic. Change our galaxy for the better. Sounds like an inspiring speech from Princess Hi, Leia here. I'm Suzanne Hunka, narrative producer on Star Wars Squadrons. Our single player story is one of daring pilots and deep seated rivalries. Take Titan Squadron, hunt down this Starhawk and eliminate it. Gladly, Admiral Sloan. Over the course of the story, you'll fly as two pilots on opposite sides of the war. And, like all modes in Star Wars Squadrons, You'll have the option By the way, to this is in VR, every guys. mission fully immersed in VR. Wedge Antilles, Rogue Squadron. I hear you're the reason I was able to finally get a comm through. Today, we're giving you a glimpse of an early Imperial mission behind enemy lines. One of our spies, Agent Thorne, has discovered vital intelligence on Project Starhawk. Your mission is to extract her from an orbital outpost above Hosni and Prime. Wow, there's so much to talk about behind here, guys. Behind enemy lines, you'll have to eliminate perimeter defenses. When you've secured the area, you will escort the Gladius to the outpost, and our extraction team will acquire Agent Thorne. Once Thorne is secure, reach your Gozanti cruisers and return to the Overseer. Cover our escape and escort us to the jump point. Very cool. We have Republic Corvettes inbound. Move, Titan! It's funny to see the Empire on the run, you know? Titan 3, take out those fighters. Understood. I'll handle it. You have my thanks, Titan Squadron. No time to celebrate. Move on. Go, go, go! Each mission will immerse you into the escalating conflict between the New Republic and a Shattered Empire. Debrief with your squadmates between missions. You're our new wingmate. Customize and master all eight starfighters and join the galaxy's finest. I need you focused and ready to go. Hear us and do that. That's awesome. From bombing runs at the Nadiri dockyards to setting a trap in the Xavian Abyss, the story of these rival squadrons will push the war to the brink and define the galaxy for years to come. I look forward to seeing you in combat October 2nd. Yeah, well, well, it's it probably the yeah, okay. it's probably uh, the, the, the narrative uh, lady who's speaking is probably from the uh, the official uh, Star Wars uh, narrative team. It's all female, recruited by Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, gladly, Kathleen. By the way, guys, if you're a Star Wars fan, apparently G Kathleen Kennedy has been fired by Disney. So uh, hopefully the future Star Wars content that we will have from now on is maybe going to be a little bit more filled with testosterone, if you see what I mean, right? A little bit more uh, manly and more attractive to the core audience of this saga. Uh, so, yeah. <sighs> Anyway, uh, there. I don't want to focus on the negative. I want to focus on the positive. And there's quite a lot uh, of uh, things here that they don't necessarily emphasize uh, on, but that an aware eye uh, is able to see. So first, we're going to start here with this introduction. It's great to have that uh, that speech here from Princess Leia. Uh, this, uh, apparently, according to Game Changers, who have been able to play this game, this is how cutscenes are between missions. So cutscenes are 
kind of had this, uh, they call that this uh, propaganda feel. So they tell you basically the consequences of your actions in the missions and what they led to very cool to see. Uh, by the way, they they, they name uh, the they named the the Emperor Palpatine, which of course is not named a single time in the original trilogy. But it's great that we have a little bit of continuity from the prequels. I think he was also named uh, a few times during the um, during the sequel trilogy as well. Uh, so yeah, he's gone, and now we are going to have to deal between uh, between the fact of the uh, of the of the remnants, the Imperial remnants, and the New Republic, which is something I've always wanted to play back in the old X-Wing series. I was I was always wondering, you know, what would it be after Return of the Jedi? The war certainly isn't over, right? And this is something that we will get to experience here in, uh, in Star Wars Squadrons. But the galaxy is changing, and you can be a part of it. With the help of brave and daring pilots, this war can end. Make a choice. Fly with the New Republic. Change our galaxy for the better. I'll probably be fighting with the uh, Empire here. Um, <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, uh, it's it's still it was still quite a, a inspiring. It makes me, yeah, I want to jump in right now, right, right into the action, Hi, and I'm let's Suzanne have a look Hunka, at what this is about. Producer on Star Wars Squadrons. Our single player story is one of daring pilots and deep seated rivalries. So this is an actual. Uh, Admiral that was not created for the game. She makes an appearance in the uh, aftermath novels, which are canon novels that were uh, that were written uh, to introduce the Force Awakens back in when it was released in 2015. So they are using some of the. I mean, Disney here is using some of the material that they created uh, a while back and putting them into their games. At least you know. It, it's a reference, right, to something that that's already existing. They're building on what they've created, and they're not creating something uh, new on top. I I respect that. I respect that. Hey, Titan Squadron, hunt down this Starhawk and eliminate it. Gladly, Admiral Sloan. Not a big fan of the old, you know, the old female cast though, uh, because it's. A bit weird, right? When you're watching the movies, the Empire is an all male cast, and now we're having an all female cast. That is um, strange. Over the course of the story, you'll fly as two pilots on opposite sides of the war. And, like all. There you go. Footage representative of VR gameplay. Now, a lot of people say, Hira, hey, right, uh, this is VR, you're gonna have to have VR. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but. This is something that I, that, I, that, I, that, I, that I, oh my goodness, where's my mic? This is something that I gave uh, some thought of, guys, and the reason why I am not going to get VR, uh, first, it's expensive. Second, I want to be able to play this game competitively. This is going to be a game that is going to be competitive, and um, I was one of the best. I, I, I'm not saying that to brag, but I was one of the best. Starfighter pilots in the X-wing versus Tie Fighter series, which I know is not really, it's not really looking like when you're looking at the uh, the gameplay that I've put in my ch on my channel recently. Uh, that's because I haven't played X-wing Alliance for many, many, many years, so it, it will come back. But I used to be a long time ago, um, of um, you know, um, I, quite a decent pilot, and I hope to be uh, um, to be uh, reacquiring those skills again. And uh, the problem I have with VR, if I want to, uh, if I want to get to the top of the ladder, the problem I have with VR is that, well, you, you know, you can't look at your keyboard. I mean, you can't see which which key you are pressing, uh, and that's the same with your with your joystick. You know, you are not really sure what you are pressing. You need to have you know some kind of, of look on on your control, which you can't do in VR. So that is why I am not going to get VR. But people are going to say, "But Irad, you you can look around uh, with a with VR." Yeah, that's true. But with the tap of the joy with the with the little top of the joystick, you can do that too, right? So that is not really an argument that resonates with me. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, let's have a look at some of the ships here uh, that are that that we haven't seen in the gameplay. Look at that. This is a Quasar class escort carrier with the rebellion here. Very 
very cool. We've seen this one. I think that the very first video game that had this this ship was Star Wars Reborn. Rebellion back in 1998, guys, and uh, making a return in a Star Wars game here in um, in 2020. Uh, very, very cool. I think that this is the first time that we get to see a Quasar class escort carrier in a in a video game that is not a strategy game. So I like that little nod. Uh, very much. This, of course, is a ship that was also visible in Star Wars Rebels 2. We also have the MC, uh, the MC-80 here, the traditional Liberty class Mont Calamari cruiser, which we haven't seen in gameplay before, but it is there as well. And uh, we can also see, look at all those uh, the starships going at it. Those are big turbo lasers, <laughs> turbo lasers everywhere, and that is also quite impressive like too. All modes in Star Wars Squadrons. You'll have the option to experience every mission fully immersed in VR. Wedge on two leaves. Yeah, Wedge. Wedge is here. Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that's what I want to hear. I hear you're the reason I was able to finally get a calm through. Today, we're giving you a glimpse of an early... Some of these uh, ships here that we got to see also in Star Wars Rebels. This is the, for those of you who haven't watched Star Wars Rebels, this is the Gazenti class cruiser. So it's like a, um, it's it's a ship that's about the, the size of a constellation in Star Citizen. And it allows TIE fighters who cannot jump into hyperspace to get into hyperspace and be deployed into several theaters of operation. So that is how the Empire deploys its starfighters, starfighters, sorry, wherever they need to. They need to have those little Gazanti cruisers, which is uh, how they can go from point A to point B. Imperial mission behind go, just enemy like lines. that. One of our spies, Agent Thorne, has discovered vital intelligence on Project Starhawk. Your mission is to extract her. Oh, by the way, guys, guys, if, if you have played the X-Wing series, you are going to recognize those star bases here. They These are classic. They are in X-Wing. They are in TIE Fighter. They are in X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. They are in X-Wing Alliance. And they are making a return in Star Wars Quadrants, especially, you know, obviously they are going to be uh, updated uh, with uh, today's, um, you know, with today's uh, graphics, because uh, especially if you look at them in X Wing Alliance nowadays, they look pretty, pretty bad. Uh, but uh, it's awesome to see them back, and it's a great nod again to how uh, the Star Wars, uh, the the Star Wars X Wing series used to be. Uh, that's why I've made this video a couple of days ago about how Squadrons is a spiritual successor to the X-Wing series. I really believe so, and every time I'm seeing new footage of Squadrons, that feeling is being reinforced. Earth from an orbital outpost above Hosnian Prime. Hosnian Prime, which is the uh, the planet that's being blown up in Episode 7, by the way. Behind enemy lines, you'll have to eliminate perimeter defenses. The is Boom, there goes the shield generator. Oh, 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 oh. By the way, look at that, guys. That's another ship uh, that uh, pilots of the X-Wing series may be familiar with. This is the Bulk Cruiser, which is a, uh, your regular Star Citizen cargo ship. Think of it as the Hull B, if you are playing, if you know about Star Citizen. Think of it as the Hull B of Star Wars. It's a typical cargo ship that goes trading back and forth, and it is in the game as well. Uh, we've seen, it was quite prominent in the X-Wing series. It is also making a return in Squadrons. I love that. Again, once more reinforcing uh, the feelings that I have that this really is a spiritual successor to the X-Wing series. When you've secured the area, you will escort the Gladius to the outpost and our extraction team will acquire Agent Thorn. Once Thorn is secure, Reach your Gozanti cruisers and return to the Overseer. Cover our escape. There we go, right? There's the uh, a typical, again, a typical Star Wars space, space sim combat mission. Uh, go to a place, destroy the fighters, wait until, you know, some critical, uh, cr mission critical ship, <laughs> mission critical craft, that's how they call it in, in, uh, in the X-Men series, wait until your mission critical craft arrives, docks at the station, make sure that the area is secure, and then when it is finished, escort it out of the way, uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, 
I am very happy to see that. Matthew Simmons says, uh, it's 2.51 a.m. Where do you live? Uh, I live in Taiwan, so that's why. It's 3.52 p.m. here. And no, there you go. There are some uh, Korean Corvettes here. The Corvettes inbound. Move, Titan. Ladies, change course and keep Agent Thorne safe. Titan 3, take out those fighters. Understood. Uh this is exactly... <laughs> how the X-Wing series play goes. This is exactly how it is. It. Here we go. Thanks, Titan Squadron. No time to celebrate. Move on. Now look at that, guys. I want you to see that. Did you guys see that? What did you guys see? What did, what did you just see? Did we see a TIE Fighter getting into hyperspace? Let's have a look again here. Is a TIE Fighter going to hyperspace? Actually, no, because what you are seeing here is the Gazanti Cruiser. Uh, that's also the, the the thing that I that I, when I watched this trailer for the very first time, I was like, "What? What? A, a Tie Fighter is going to hyperspace? How is that possible?" Right? I was <laughs> I was barking at my at my computer. I was like, "How did they do that? How dared they?" And then I had to look at this, and I was like, "Oh wait, this is uh, not a Tie Fighter here. Oh, this is going into hyperspace." And of course, uh, it makes sense because in the mission briefing, they did say that once it is complete, dock back to your Gazanti and, and hyperspace out of the area, and that's exactly what they're doing here. Immersion Star Wars realism here, and uh, these are again more uh, more things that I want to see from a Star Wars space sim combat, and this makes me really excited. Boom! Each mission will immerse you into the escalating con. By the way, let's have a look again. Do, 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 do. Apparently, there you go. Wedge Antilles is uh, somewhere around here. So apparently, we're gonna have a a mission with Wedge Antilles. Another thing that I like to see is that um, ships are named again because in every single videos that we've seen, uh, we've just seen Imperial, you know, just Star Destroyers. Like, uh, why why don't these ships have names? So it seems that now they do have names. Now it's not Star Destroyers, ISD Victorium, just like the way it should be in a Star Wars space sim. Again, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Escalating conflict between the New Republic and a shattered empire. Debrief with your squad mates between missions. You're our new wingmate. Customize and master all eight starfighters and jo join the galaxy's finest. I need you focused and ready to go. Uh, I like it, but guys, again, uh, who, if you watch the Star Wars Rebels, you are going to, uh, you are going to recognize General Sindula. Glad to see her as well. Uh, she was one of the main heroes of the Star Wars Rebels series. Eventually joined, uh, fully joins the Rebel Alliance. And I think that we can hear there's like an Easter egg in Star Wars, uh, Star Wars Rogue One, where they say uh, General Sindula at the command uh, at the command desk. And we can hear that on, on the radio, and which in, indicates that in, in lore she became a general. We can see that in real you know, for real in the game uh, Reynolds says it's such a shame Disney gave uh, EA the Star Wars license uh, I agree with you uh, I agree with you Reynolds I'm for the Empire Matthew Simmons says yeah me too uh, me too Matthew I'll, I'll definitely be uh, rooting for the Empire <laughs> from bombing runs at the Nadiri dockyards Setting a trap in the Xavian Abyss. So here they're they're giving us names like the Nadiri Dorias and the Xavian Abyss. Uh, this doesn't speak to me. If you were, and this is where I think. I mean, kudos here. They're trying to bring new locations. You know, that's awesome. They're being original. Okay, very cool. Uh, but that doesn't speak to me. Talk to me about Kua shipyards, Mount Calamari, you know, Sola, something, you know, locations that we've that we've seen in a movies or in other uh, source materials, you know, like 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 legends books maybe, uh, because the new canon, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about it. The story of these rival squadrons will push the war to the brink and define the galaxy for years to come. I look forward to seeing you in combat October 2nd. Oh, I look forward to seeing... I, I look forward to eradicating you in combat in, on October 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I don't know what you guys think about uh, Star Wars Corn. Apart from this whole, you know, narrative and then PR thing, the old female cast, you know, soy, whatever, uh, which I, I really can't stand. Um, I am still excited because, uh, well, yeah, the what I'm seeing here really reminds me 
of the old X-Wing series. It seems like, you know, this is a game that is being made by passionate people who know what they're doing, uh, who uh, who grew up or played a lot with the, you know, the, 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 the classic Star Wars spacing game. And they are going to bring those, uh, that experience into the 21st century in 2020. And I can't wait for October 2nd. Thank you very much for watching this, guys. Uh, stay tuned to the channel because we got more uh, coming up. Uh, we've got a um, we've got a flight simulator video now, guys, and uh, I'm going to take you to Malta. So hope you do. I hope that you are going to enjoy that one. This is the Eradicator. I'll see you guys later. And